It's 87, the 87th episode of 55 and 5, the only show on YouTube where we go one card at a time through the 121 card set. Carrie Silken, AJ from Basan Creative Web Design, our producer. Carrie, we are almost at 75% of this project done. Amazing. And and in honor of hitting the three quarter way through, you promised me a hunk. Yeah, I got a hunk all right. So for those that are just joining us for the first time on these episodes, it's called 55 because of the 55 Parker set. It's called five because of the five minute time limit. Carrie and I can talk a lot about wrestling, especially when we know the subject. Now we've had some minor stars. We've had some stars that we've never heard before. And we have guys like this today. Carrie, as we're getting through the end of the set, it's getting harder and harder to pull Hall of Famers out of the luck of the draw. But we have one here today, a bona fide Hall of Famer by any measure and a real matinee idol. I believe he stood at six feet, geez, six feet, five inches tall, according to the back of the card. Wow. A handsome man. I'm looking. Yeah. Oh, I saw Don Leo Jonathan live. Really? Yes. At Madison Square Garden. Oh, yeah. Late in his. Now, this is 1955. Mm -hmm. He came in to the old WWF. In 72 or 3. Yep, 73. And he wrestled. Yep. I saw him at the Garden against Pedro Morales. Ah, I have that on the safety net and here. he yeah. was a legend. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a true legend. One of Canada's greatest athletes. Right. And it's funny because he's he's the Mormon giant. He's from Utah. But right. yeah. he lived in British Columbia and really, really became a true Canadian. Yes. Yeah, he... So... So this card, the picture, is basically 20 years before I saw him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, he matured, but he was still a good-looking guy. He was really tall, mm -hmm. towering over Pedro Morales. Uh, I think the Grand Wizard managed him. Oh, wow. Let's hear about it. Yeah. Uh, so we had talked about the uh, the great Canadian athlete, Mr. Canada, that we had come up before as the only living wrestler in the set. Don Leo Jonathan, we narrowly missed that. He just passed away recently, 2018. Uh, lived from 31 to 2018, so a hell of a life. Um, he served in the U.S. Navy. He's known as he's legitimately known as one of the great Canadian athletes. A great, but he's from Utah. He's known as the Mormon Giant. Uh, served in the U.S. Navy though, uh, right after World War II, which is an interesting fact. And he's actually a second generation wrestler. Really, his father was Brother Jonathan, and he wrestled on, on the West Coast, in Utah, California. He was a champion everywhere he went. I mean, he was he, you name it. I mean, he's named he held held championships on five continents. Uh, he, he won the WCW tag titles in Australia, 18-time Vancouver tag team champion, Maple Leaf tag titles with Whipper Billy Watson, former Texas champion, uh, really matinee movie worked star. Worked South also, I believe. Uh, yeah. Everywhere. He, he worked everywhere. And everywhere he went, he was a star. He was a main event guy. Um, he started in San Francisco, but he got his first big break in Canada in Montreal for Eddie Quinn. And he actually won the Montreal title in Boston. <laughs> okay. He defeated Killer Kowalski for the Montreal belt in uh, 53. And uh, he, his one of his biggest breaks came on a rare nationally televised live wrestling card from St. Louis, which they really? di they didn't broadcast many live from St. Louis. Huh? And he faced Lou Thez in 1954 for the NWA title. Did you double check that? It's hard I did. To believe. Yeah, I double checked that. Yeah, and so he he faced Lou Thez there, and it was aired live on television 54. Uh, I thought it was a little unusual as well, but. Apparently, that's that's what happened. Uh, drew huge crowds in 55 and 56 against Yvonne Robert, Buddy Rogers, Pat O'Connor. And then he and Luthez became frequent opponents throughout the remainder of, of Thez's title runs. Um, his later career is where it gets fun because Andre the Giant comes over yeah, in the late sure. 60s. And he becomes Andre the Giant's big money-making opponent uh, in 1972. And if I would have known he was coming, I would have checked with, with uh, Bushwhacker Luke. Right. Because they probably crossed paths in uh, Montreal. Well, and they crossed paths on his second to last match ever. Really? By the way. Yes. So in 73, he comes and challenges. Pa 72, he faces Andre. They call it the match of the century. Joe the monster gate. Uh, 73, he faces Pedro for the title. And then uh, from there, he is in a red hot Portland territory. And he's actually teaming with Andre the Giant. He's now a good guy again. Uh, and Roddy Piper. So the team of Andre the Giant, Roddy Piper, and Don Leo Jonathan. Wow. Taking on uh, Outlaw Ron Bass, Buddy Rose, and the Sheepherders. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So that had to be like 79, 80. That was 80. And okay. then his very final match was about two weeks later against Otto Vons in Austria. This guy, man, you know, what a life he had. Yeah. He's five continents he wrestled on. Uh, only missing Antarctica. And as far as I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> and where else? Uh, he probably was in Africa. Yeah. He might have had six. I'll double check that. He might have. Been, I know He held titles in five. So he might have wrestled in six out of the seven. Well, he made good money. Yeah. Had a good long life. Yeah. Toured the world. Saw it all. Did it wrestle them all? Ask, what more can you ask for? Incredible. And uh, geez, he looks, I mean, if you want a picture per, he looks like a movie star. Yeah, a handsome man. I'm Leo Jonathan. Yeah, one of the all-time greats uh, in the Wrestling Observer Hall of Fame. I believe he was one of the, the posthumous inductees recently in the WWE Hall of Fame as well. Well, so, he deserves it, that's for sure. Absolutely. And uh, this one's this one was fun because this is a name that I'd heard for years and years. And it's one of those names you hear, but you don't know how to place it. And to know he was a big star in Montreal and then wrestling with Fez. Well, boys and girls, it's good to learn these things. If you're a fan or, you know, these young wrestlers, uh, is it important that they know this? I don't know. I think it is. Yeah, and, and he's, we talked yesterday about Matt Murphy having footage, a lot of video on Don Leo Jonathan. So it's pretty cool to be able to go back and watch that. Excellent. Yeah. So we thank you for joining us on episode 87 on 55 and 5. Tomorrow's 88. And tomorrow, we have a, uh, a wrestler that only had a three-year career, and it didn't even encompass the year these cards came out. So we got got another one of these oddballs. Another payoff. Yeah. <laughs> another oddball. Not quite the star John Leo Jonathan was, but was very known in Hamilton, Ontario. Okay. Big star there. So we will get to 88 tomorrow. We hope you join us. For AJ, for Carrie, I'm Ian Riccoboni. Happy wrestling, everybody. Bye.